She says she is worried about the safety of her colleagues. The town hall was also washed away by the tsunami. Officials set up an emergency town office at a corner of a shelter. Mayor James Sato says the tsunami came when he and other officials were in the town hall, urging residents to evacuate. Mayor Sato says many people were on the rooftop and someone cried, a tsunami is coming. He says he clung to an iron handrail along an emergency stairway and survived the tsunami. He says after the tsunami waves subsided, he saw only seven people left on the rooftop. And now only the framework remains, and um, this is the um, disaster prevention hall. Um, and some of the staffs held on to the handrail and staircase to survive. There were only 10 left, and the remaining 20 were nowhere to be seen. Mayor says there was nothing, nothing left whatsoever. The mayor has left the town office, and uh, some of his staffs are unaccounted for. Sato is in need of relief groups uh, to assist the survivors. He, Sato says there's no food, there's no water. He says that he wants to call upon everyone in Japan for food and water. That is the assistance that is needed, he says. Imagine being stuck for days in an office building desperate for drinking water. We'll take you on a rescue mission in one Japanese town that is literally drowning in flood water. CNN Marketplace Africa puts you on the inside track. Follow the money. Go beyond the numbers. Stay ahead of the trends. It's a market that's probably changing faster than any in the world. Meet the people driving growth across the region. A weekly showcase for a new frontier in world business. CNN Marketplace Africa. Friday only on CNN. I'm Helen Rani. Welcome back to Headlines this half hour. Scientists in Japan are keeping a close watch on three troubled nuclear reactors at the Fukushima power plant as they struggle to prevent a fuel rod meltdown. Cooling system failures and other issues have led to heat and pressure buildup that have forced the release of radioactive steam. 91 countries are pledging to help Japan in one way or another. Rescue teams from China and the U.S. are already hard at work. Even New Zealand has sent a small search team from Christchurch, which of course is still reeling from a deadly earthquake itself. U.S. President Barack Obama had this message of solidarity. 
I've said directly to the Prime Minister of Japan, Prime Minister Khan, uh, that the United States will continue to offer any assistance we can as Japan recovers from multiple disasters. Uh, and we will stand with the people of Japan in the difficult days ahead. Gulf troops and tanks, including some Saudi soldiers, are in Bahrain today. They rolled in from neighboring Saudi Arabia Monday. They say they came in at Bahrain's request. Following a month of protests and violent clashes in the tiny kingdom, demonstrators reportedly shut down the financial district in Bahrain's capital on Monday. Also, Muammar Gaddafi's troops are launching new attacks on rebel-held towns in eastern and western Libya. The opposition has been in retreat in the last few days. The UN Security Council has been meeting behind closed doors on a request from the Arab League to impose a no-fly zone over Libya. But that concept doesn't seem like it will materialize anytime soon. We'll get the latest information on the nuclear power plant in just a moment, but first, we want to show you some compelling video out of Japan. The disaster there is first and foremost a story, of course, about people, about their suffering, their loss, and their grief. And the pictures you're about to see show the tsunami destroying much more than a small fishing village. Pay attention to the lower left part of the screen. You can see villagers who appear to be safe only to have the water surge their way. We warn you, these scenes are difficult to watch. <laughs> 